Welcome to the Music and Matters podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Emily Williams Birch, and this podcast, it exists for you. Whether you're a music lover, an educator, a choir member, each week we bring guests to the show to help explore what matters in music. I'm so glad that you're here. Welcome to the show. Hello, and welcome to the Music Ed Matters podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Emily Williams Birch, and this is episode 74, where you're going to meet my dear friend and co author, Mr. Alex Gardner. In this episode, we tell you all about the book we are currently writing. It's scheduled to be released. Well, I don't want to spoil anything, but we'll tell you what it's about, why we're writing it who we're writing it for, all the bits and pieces. We recorded this at the end of the second day of our second huge writing retreat. And y'all, we had just finished getting words in every chapter. So we are so excited to bring this project to you and share a little bit about what we're working on and how you can benefit from it when it releases. I cannot thank Alex enough for doing this episode. I can't thank GIA enough for believing in us to publish this book. And we can't wait to bring you the official book tour when all is said and done. This should give you everything you need to know, but if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know, emilybirch.org slash contact, or join the conversation where we're having tons of great fun every month at our monthly meetups over at patreon.com slash musicedmatters. Without further ado, a quick message from our sponsors, and then you get to hear about our book with my friend and co-author, Alex Gardner. This episode is brought to you by the Kennison Choral Company. Check out their amazing collection of rehearsal tracks and more at KennisonCoralCo.com. Hello, and welcome to the Music Ed Matters podcast on this very special episode with my friend, Alex Gardner. Hello, Alex. Hi, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. We are sitting in the living room because we are on writing retreat number two of three. Yes, two of three. And as of this afternoon, all chapters have words in them. I mean, there's a lot of editing and stuff left to be done, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start by telling the listeners, who's Alex Gardner? Oh, goodness. Um, So um, I'm Alex Gardner. I am the artistic and executive director of the Pensacola Children's Chorus in Pensacola, Florida. Um, I moved to Pensacola by means of Cincinnati, where I was the assistant uh, assistant director of the Cincinnati Youth Choir. Um, And yeah, that's me. Alex, good people. (laughs) Such good people. We've worked together on a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Um, We bonded at a children's and youth choir directors retreat in New Jersey. And we have later planned that same. Yeah, we later planned that same Mm -hmm. event in Atlanta. It was absolutely so much fun. Friday morning work meetings. Yes, every every Friday, Friday. every Friday. So we are right. um, We are doing this podcast to tell you all about our book. Yes. What's our book called? What is our book called? So right now working title is called Behind the Choir, um, an executive guide to magnifying your organization's value and potential. I think I got all the words. I think you got them all. That's obviously the working title. It might change between now and when it actually happens. It's kind of the sequel to Barbara Tagg's book, before the singing. And she knows we feel that way because, y'all, she's writing the preface for our book. I know. We talked to her. Yesterday. I guess yesterday. Yeah. Oh, and she's she's, she's a gem. And she's so excited for us. And we're just so grateful to have her support in this. You know, I, I feel like I should tell one quick story. Talking to Dr. Tag is both really a, an honor, but also exciting to think about what groundwork was laid before our generation came yeah. to the scene of choir land. So Dr. Tag talks about going out and having to explain what a children's choir even is. What does it do? And people were like, yeah, no, kids can't do that. And so to think about her generation and so many of these wonderful directors from that generation laying the groundwork so that we can then say, okay, we know how to start choirs now. We know how to build choirs in our in our churches, in our communities, in our schools. But what about the non-artistic side? And that's the void. So really the book is after the singing. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting kind of what Barbara and her colleagues in that generation did, because in many ways, there's some of that that we still have to combat today. Mm -hmm. You know, when people think of children singing, they think of that stereotypical sound where kids are cute. They're not necessarily accurate. You think of just something that's not super high quality experience. Mm -hmm. And then you bring an audience member, you convince them finally to come to one of these concerts and they're just blown away by the artistic abilities Mm -hmm. of children. Um, And we are lucky that we just sort of have the privilege of getting to do that every single day. And Mm -hmm. we don't have to really 
fight that fight so much anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, Barbara's generation really just sort of paved the way to legitimacy, really. Mm -hmm. Um, That's why children's choirs have such a prominent role in our, especially in the United States, Mm -hmm. in our musical fabric. It's really incredible. Mm -hmm. So we're intensely grateful for all of them. And if you are listening and you are one of those people that paved the way and did that legwork, we are so appreciative. And we feel like this book is doing the legwork for whatever's coming after us. So if you are the up and coming generation, we can't wait to see what you do based on where we're going from here. So speaking of people, who is this book for? So the book is sort of designed for the the music educator, the choral conductor um, who went to music school or finds themselves in a choral leadership role and finds themselves struggling with the sort of like the back end of choir, the Mm -hmm. business side of running a choir. Um, You know, most of our, I mean, our degrees are all in music. Mm -hmm. I mean, music, music education, conducting, and we both run independent organizations. Mm-hmm. And so there's a, a huge learning gap that is not, uh, there's a huge gap in our learning mm-hmm. knowledge right. um, that, that was not filled in our undergrad about sort of this, what Barbara called um, the choral entrepreneur. Yes. Fancy word. Yes. Um, that sort of business acumen that mm-hmm. comes with running a choral organization. Um, and not necessarily just running it, but sort of growing it Mm -hmm. on the business side. And so that's what this book is for is um, trying to help those types of people who find themselves in those positions sort of get the skills and knowledge Mm -hmm. that they need to grow. Like we said, it's a sequel to Dr. Tag's before the choir. It's okay. (laughs) So I have a choir now what, and it's the next step. So I feel like this book really is for anyone that has a choir, whether you're in a church or you're in a school or you're in a community situation. Um, I personally wrote it because having the conversations with my students, I teach at the college level uh, methods classes from Mm -hmm. introduction to music ed, elementary music ed, secondary music methods, all of those. And we were really struggling codifying how to communicate our value. Yeah. What is our value? And ad- how do we advocate for our programs by communicating the value? Yes, my students can write a killer sequence and the most gorgeous lesson plan you've ever seen. And their teaching strategies are really growing. Mm-hmm. But communicating value, walk into a room, acquire people, I can communicate value all day. Exactly. This book is about how do you communicate value to the non-musicians. Exactly. Exactly. I So one of the reasons that I wanted to write this book is... You know, in my role right now, so I succeeded you, Emmy, as the Southern Region Chair for Children's and Community Youth Choirs with the uh, American Choral Directors Association. And when the pandemic hit, I started to get all of these emails and phone calls from choir directors from across the United States, really, especially in Florida, where I'm based, but across the Southern United States, um, and even a random choir in Milan. I'm not really sure how that came about, but it was all these, I suppose. (laughs) We talk about that search engine optimization (laughs) that's coming in chapter seven. Anyway, continue. Um, and so during the pandemic, people were like, okay, what are you doing? How are you doing this? Um, what are you doing to stay afloat? What are your strategies? And oh my gosh, you're so what, what did you do before all of this happened mm-hmm. to put you in a position to, to continue? And, and, and so it's, it was clear to me that choir directors, especially during the pandemic, sort of needed a lot of help and realized that there were some gaps in sort of our collective body of knowledge as choral directors mm-hmm. uh, that, in a time of crisis, we really needed, as a field, some help. Right. We needed some knowledge about the non-musical things because the musical things weren't happening. We had to right. stop. Um, and so that's sort of that was a big motivational factor for me is, you know, at Pensacola Children's Course, we have a really strong business operation. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to, and I inherited a lot of that. So I wanted to help uh, convey how we continued to make that happen and continue to today. During one of our writing blocks today, you told a great story. We were we we have these little blocks, and that's why we have writing retreats, so we can like ah and bounce off each other. <laughs> so Alex was saying the pandemic, and you I think you found better words for it, but the pandemic really put a spotlight on aspects of our organizations that need attention that you could kind of gloss over when it was, yes, it is about the music and it's about the community and being together, but there is so much that's bubbling, kind of like a duck that's having its feet going Mm -hmm. underwater. There is so much action under the music that makes it happen behind the music. And that's kind of what motivated us. It's it's the phone calls or the, the Facebook messages. Hey, how are you doing X, Y, Z? 
And there's no reason to not be transparent and share all of these experiences. Yeah. I, in our introduction, we talk about like the, you know, you, you get on stage in a concert and you've got this incredible program. The singers do incredible and you just feel so empowered and, and, and motivated and, and fulfilled. You know, this is why I got into doing this. And then so the you get off your concert high and you get backstage and you open up your phone and you see this email from like, I got an email while we were writing this from one of our grantors who were like, your report was due yesterday. Where is it? I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> and right. so all of a sudden this high that you're on is just depleted because of this business side, this back end of choir. And, and as choir directors and musicians and artists and, and empaths, usually we just, that, that type of work can be very, um, unmotivational and like really very unfulfilling. Yes. And so part of the reason that we wanted to write this book is to give a little credence to how the business side of choir can be fulfilling and how, mm -hmm. if you think about it in a certain way, um, it, it can really support that artistic thing that we love so much. Mm -hmm. And, but it, it's intentional. It's a choice to do that. And, and, um, like we said earlier, you know, most of our degrees don't give us the, the tools and skills that we need right. to make that happen. And so that's, that's a big important aspect of mm -hmm. this book. So we've talked about what the book is, who it's for, and we've, we've already covered basically what motivated us to do this. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to note why us, why, why are we qualified to do this? And I know personally just sharing the experiences of reading tons of books about how to start an organization and you read tons of books on grant writing mm -hmm. and the experiences of starting a, an organization from the ground up or reinventing an organization that had been established for years. I think it's a combination of these experiences combined with our passion for reading. Yeah, there, there's a no secret to, to Emmy and I that as, as we've been as we've been writing this book over the last several months, we've talked a lot about the insecurity that we both hold. Imposter syndrome and fear of yeah. letting people down or saying the wrong thing, but it's okay. We're overcoming it, it. Yes, it is. You know, we we haven't been we haven't been a part of Barbara Tag's generation, and and just the many people who have gone before us that really built this movement. Mm -hmm. um, but We're that next generation. Yeah, something that Barbara said to us yesterday that was really motivational. I mean, she looked at both of us on a Zoom call and just said, "You guys are part of this next generation," mm -hmm. and the work that she did and that so many of her colleagues did that was that was their defining moment, and that. The next step is kind of up to us. And, and so the imposter syndrome, the insecurity comes not necessarily from a place of um, we don't we aren't confident in what we right. know. It's just sort of the we and so many of our colleagues are taking this next step mm -hmm. and sort of uh, taking this field in mm -hmm. for for our generation. Right. And, and that that is it's hard to be doing that in such a public way. Right. Uh, and yeah. as so many people, I know so many of you listening right now could totally write some of these chapters. Yeah. And it's not that we are saying that we are the be all and all, this is how the chapter is. It's really just a conversation starter, a think, a thought book, a yeah. think process. Well, it, start here. Exactly. Most of the chapters uh, ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. It's not really like a, this is the step-by-step -step blueprint on how you need to do X, Y, and Z. It's more of a have you considered things this way? Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing something in this manner, have you taken a look over here in mm -hmm. this other corner? And does that work for you? And if not, cool. Right. Keep doing you. But it's just sort of a, a, a thought provoking book. Right. Uh, and, and we're writing this because we both have some pretty uh, unique but very different experiences mm -hmm. in choral leadership. You know, you started your own group here mm -hmm. in Savannah um, and I took over. Um, a program in Pensacola that has been that was established for almost thirty years. We're in our thirty mm -hmm. second year now, um, and so between that, the, the two mm -hmm. those two types of business experiences, mm -hmm. um, there's a whole lot of perspective and, ex and experience that we sort of had to learn on our own. Right. Um, there, there isn't a book. No, the there's field. not one single book. There's lots of books, and we do have a dynamite resource list. Yes, Holy smokes, with all of our favorite books to read and all sorts of like examples and things to help you get started. One way we were thinking about this book was 
putting all of it in that one resource, one place. Exactly. We wanted to, because there's not just one guide, there's incredible guides on fundraising and advocacy and boards and all these other things that are really in depth. But mm -hmm. in terms of getting your feet wet, buying a bunch of books in, in those fields can be very overwhelming mm -hmm. and you don't really know where to begin. And so what we're trying to do is sort of translate some of that really in-depth thinking into more consumable terms. We're making it relatable to you as musicians in ways that we have found helpful so that we can communicate across those business lines. And hopefully something in there will resonate with you. And if nothing else, you can flip to the chapter on whatever you need the definitions for. And we've got some dynamite definitions. <laughs> Each <laughs> What's in this book? Let's, we, should, we have to talk about what's in this book. Yeah, absolutely. So there's three big sections in this book. It's how you um, build value and how you define that in order to grow your, your organization, whether that's through volunteers and board management and your community at large or retention and recruitment of singers, or um, if it's the financial and number part, how do you measure your impact? So those are those three big sections. Yeah. The first one is really focused on capacity and support. Mm -hmm. So like you said, defining your value, but then how do you leverage that value to grow right. and get bigger? And then the second section is really about, um, finding your people, mm -hmm. not just your singers, but also like your staff mm -hmm. and your, like you said, your, your volunteer volunteers. leadership, your board leadership. And then the third is sort of kind of walking the walk, mm -hmm. learning how numbers and evaluation can, um, give your value steroids. <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. That's exactly it. it. <laughs> Each chapter starts with some type of random analogy. Um, we don't want to give any of those away because that's kind of like oh, the best part of the book. Like we They're really random. so much fun <laughs> coming up with random analogies. So every chapter starts with an analogy that then ties into definitions. So you get all of the instruction and then you get the theory and then there's practice. So at the end of each chapter, because this will actually be a textbook for all my music ed classes, one of one of the textbooks, there's a chapter outline, a chapter summary, there's discussion questions. And then because all of this can seem overwhelming, a lot of us are doing this by ourselves. Not mm -hmm. everyone is like Alex Gardner, who has a staff of a bajillion people. I'm kidding. He doesn't have a staff of a bajillion people. I didn't start people. with a staff. He didn't of, start that way. I didn't start there. But he did write the chapter on how to grow that. <laughs> it's great because he grew that all by himself. It was so cool. What a team effort. Anyway. The whole point is there. there is practices for don't get overwhelmed. Here's your next best step. So if all else fails, you can jump to the end of the chapter, kind of see what the chapter is about, what areas you need to focus on. And instead of getting overwhelmed, it's like trying to eat the entire cake. You just have to actually have one bite. Yeah. So this book is sort of structured in, I would say, a kind of non-traditional way. You know, you read most books and you expect that like, you know, if you read any self-help book like Brene Brown, mm -hmm. you know, you start yes. with these really wonderful, like feel goody stuff. And then you have to get to the middle before you sort of get to that really tough stuff. Mm -hmm. We sort of bring that out right in chapter one. Yeah. We, we refer to chapter one a lot. Chapter one is all about, um, see chapter one happens kind of often. <laughs> if you don't understand, see chapter one before you go on here. See chapter one. If you have a question here, see chapter, chapter one. <laughs> yeah. So chapter one is really about defining your organization's value outside of the musical sphere mm -hmm. because one of the assumptions that we have have kind of taken on with writing this book is that as musicians and choral directors we sort of get the musical part of it we understand the musical value of our organizations we understand what artistic quality and kind of how those buzzwords are really important for our organization's health um, and reputation mm -hmm. The first chapter is really kind of taking that artistic side, that artistic viewpoint of our organizations and leveraging that in a way that shines a spotlight on the business side of things. So mm -hmm. sort of how does that artistic vision support mm -hmm. everything else? Mm -hmm. Because a concert is only a moment in time. Our organizations last for 12 months out of the year, every single day of the week. Mm -hmm. And so in order to communicate our value and build support, especially with people who just don't inherently get it, like mm -hmm. you and me, choir directors, um, we have to think a little bit more creatively. And so the first chapter is focused on kind of not, not debunking our kind of artistic beliefs on the value of choir, but sort of 
broadening our viewpoint about the importance of the things that are not necessarily musical. Mm -hmm. Because then the rest of the chapters, whether it's on fundraising or it's on recruitment, whether it's on building personnel culture and boards and, and understanding numbers. And evaluations. And eva oh, I know. I love that chapter. They sort of all start with kind of a, the analogies are used to sort of like kind of butter you up as to why these things are important. Because it's really easy I find it's easy for me as a choir director to be like, well, I don't really want to focus on program evaluation today. I'd rather pick music. Right. Or I'd we rather, love picking music. <laughs> I would rather plan a really effective rehearsal than write this grant. But, but I need to do both. And I have to understand the, the importance of all of that. Mm -hmm. And so that the, the first chapter is really this kind of like, right. it grabs it and goes. This is the point. Mm -hmm. This is the point of the book. And, and everything, everything else spins off. spins off of that. I tell my students all the time, if you can't clearly define your why and state your mission in a variety of ways, how are you going to communicate your value and your why to the parent that walks in the room, to the to the student in your class who doesn't want to be there, to the admin who needs to cut a job somewhere to save some money, to the superintendent who's looking. Like, if you don't know how to communicate your why statement in a variety of ways, there will be no performance and there will be no music to pick. Exactly. And this whole book is about your executive guide to all of those things that happen behind the music. So you can pick and purchase the music. So you can have that killer concert. So you can have the perfect sound that you're looking for. Of course. You know, everybody wants to grow. Right. You don't want to just stay stagnant. I mean, I would assume, right. I, I would mm -hmm. think that everybody wants to. If you're that. listening to this podcast, I'm assuming that you're wanting to take the next step, whatever the next step is for you. Yeah. So we're, this book is sort of trying to give you all the tools that you would need to empower yourself mm -hmm. to take the next step. It's not a guide for, a, it's not a how-to guide mm -hmm. by any means. We, there are too many philosophies and strategies mm -hmm. and program models out there that for us, Emmy and Alex, to say this is the end all be all authoritative no. way to grow your organization, that would just that would just no. be so inappropriate. This is more like <laughs> here are all the ingredients, taste them, test them, see how they fit with your flavors, mm -hmm. and then try a new recipe and see what comes out. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. Yeah, try a different one. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. And it brings so much vitality to our programs. It's been such a joy to be working on this. I know that I mean, we have words in every chapter, which I'm still stoked about. I know, about. it's crazy. It's really crazy. I know the hardest part is coming, but let's tell them a little bit about when they can see this book. So we are recording this on the second day of October. The second day of October. And the year of our Lord, 2021. 2021. <laughs> it is due to our publisher because we have a dynamite publisher. We have our letter of intent. It's coming out. Can yes. Can tell them who our publisher is? Sure. It's through GIA Publications. Because they're amazing. They are amazing. And they were especially amazing during the pandemic. If if you paid attention to social media, um, they hosted this incredible series of webinars. They were one of the first and I at least from what I follow, and I follow a lot of people and a lot of companies, they just really picked topics that were really um, important to the moment. They brought in people that um, were empowering. And in a time where like the music world was just feeling really, really down low, mm -hmm. they made a really strong intention to build up. Mm -hmm. And and I admired that. Mm -hmm. And um, Alec Harris, their, their CEO, president, mm -hmm. I think really drove that train. That's who's... Mm -hmm. Um, we, we spoke with about mm -hmm. this book and proposed, and we're just really excited to be with GIA. Uh, it's been fantastic, and we're really looking forward to the editing process that comes once we turn in the manuscript. Um, just a little bit of another teaser. You will be hearing a virtual book tour coming out on the podcast. Yes. Um, so when is all this happening? So our book is due by the end of this year, and we're hoping for publication sometime by um, summer of next year, if everything goes as planned. If not, it'll come out at some point next year. No big deal. You can hear us. We are presenting on yeah. chapter one. Um, well, it's not chapter one. It's it's an actual presentation of awesomeness. <laughs> um, you know, you are better than a used car salesman. What, what is it? Yeah. So we we are presenting at the uh, ACDA Children's and Youth Choir Conductors Retreat, which will be held in Tucson mm -hmm. in January. Over MLK weekend. Over MLK weekend. Um, it's, it's, I think we call it a communicating your choir's value. Choir's car sales and everything in between that's it communicating your value yes choir car, car sales, sales and, and everything, everything in between. between the premise of course and without giving anything away we all know that that analogy of the used car salesman mm -hmm. you know they can sell anything yeah 
Uh, and you can too if you read our book. <laughs> Don't give anything else away. I'm not giving. I'm just. Choirs are not used cars. No. Nope. Choirs are <laughs> very different than cars, but there's something to be learned about that sort of philosophy of mm. I I can talk to an, literally mm. anybody in the world about a used car and I can convince them to buy it. Why can't we do the same thing for choir? Mm-hmm. Why can't we take anybody who has a love for music, a love for choir, or none of, none those, of things. those things? Why can't we communicate the value of choir and maybe usher them to support us anyway? That's it happens point. all the time. It is very possible. People, people buy do that. cars. And people support choirs who have no musical bones in their body. That's okay. That's okay. It's all about communicating that value. Mm-hmm. So you can hear us in January in Tucson, and we'll be doing lots of cool stuff throughout the year, so you'll have to stay tuned. The neatest part, I think, is not only is Barbara Tag writing our preface, but we have each section opens up with an interview by yes. people that are absolute experts in that area. So I'm not going to tell you, you have to stay tuned because those interviews will be happening on this podcast. And then we'll be pulling the content from those interviews to kind of interweave and uh, eloquently write them as authors into the (laughs) introductions to each of these chapters. So there's a lot of really cool stuff coming and we've been dying to share what was going on, but we had to get all the chapters written before we could tell tell you all about it. So the chapters are written. There's a book coming. I know it's, it's crazy. The, the The manuscript is due December 1st. We kind of choked at that deadline, but it, it is it's, actually it's, it's happening. after this weekend. Mm-hmm. It might be doable. One more writing retreat after this. I highly recommend writing retreats if you need to get something done. We can yes. tell you about that another time. <laughs> so we've told you what the book is called. We told you who it's for, what motivated us to write it, why we are writing it, why us. Um, again, we know that so many of you could write something just as incredible, if not better. But we're taking the time to write it for you because we want to help answer those questions and see where our field goes from here. We've given you some hints as to what's in it and when you can expect to see it. Fingers crossed and all the prayers up in the sky. And stay tuned for more on this virtual book tour with Alex Gardner. Thanks, Emma. Hey, I'm so glad you're here. Hey. We have a lot of writing to do tomorrow. Yes, we, we do. have to call it a day. Hey, thanks for listening. Now you know all about the book. We cannot wait to get it out to you. Thank you so much for listening to the episode. Thank you for supporting everything we're doing over at the Music Good Matters podcast. I hope that whatever you're doing today, you know that you matter. We all know that music matters, especially books that help us be even better educators behind the scenes. And I'll see you next time on the Music Good Matters podcast.